I still want to destroy them. Um, but you can use something like maybe little soft mallets if they are dressed properly for painting that smocks. You can do this on the floor with a lot of newspaper. You can do that and it comes off in a really cool sort of natural splatter. This is not always good for when you are trying to make something look like something. Um, these are a lot of very expressive materials. You can do that, but um, these are mainly for abstract pieces, which I think is a fun thing to get into at a young age, because like I said, kids like to play, like to have experiment things. But other than that, I've got Good these actual, a lot of materials. You can find a lot of these at home. Um, Katie, do you want to smock? Okay. <laughs> um, play with the application of the paint. Sometimes you want to have more water, sometimes you don't. If you decide you don't like that, and you might want to add more water this way. Like it's all about, you can really get messy, which is fun for me. But. And again, crayons, you can use crayons in a lot of different ways. Some people do them like, we. If you, how many of you went to Art Bash this year? Maybe you go to Art Bash? Did you see all the experimental art tools that we had in the education room? It was really cool. You can use crayons and you can um, tie them like, to sticks at the end. I, I feel like I should have had that. Um, and that gives you no control over the pen. I'm very little control over the crayon. However, it creates really interesting marks. And, um, it might be fun to just experiment with inventions through Conventions through making art tools um, using different marks. And when you do this, you'll see. It's kind of neat to see that difference between this and that. I'll show you one of my favorites. Uh, oh, wait, here. This one, hopefully, it won't spray. If you add a lot of water to one side, Really play with the amount of water you have. So you've got that difference there. Um, something I like to do is I like to add a lot of <laughs> glitter or some things, but um, also sprays. This can be just any kind of spray. It can be, uh, <laughs> if you have like these leftover Halloween cosmetics, bring them in as long as they're non-toxic. This is non-toxic. Yeah, it's layers. But it also adds some really weird techniques to what you had. Um, again, new mark making tools. This is fun. This is an old purse strap. Hmm. And it's just experimenting in play, which you can do at home too. Um, I recommend practicing on your own sometimes. This one would be a very good hit. I like this. Oh, um, should we stand back? How do you decide, Katie, <laughs> when something's finished? That's a really good question. Um, battle with that question very often. I think that kids are actually better at deciding it when they're finished when adults are, in my opinion. If you've worked with them at the Imagination Station, you'll see them go with all this mush, and they'll go through this and go through this, and you don't know that there's you can tell on their face that there's a method to their madness, but maybe there isn't, I don't know. And then, I'll, like, add a mark there, like, I'm done. And I'm like, oh, so how did you know? <laughs> it really depends on whether or not you, I mean, you have to really feel that you're finished, or if I wanted to break it down scientifically, and um, not scientifically, but by the rules of element, the principles and elements of design, I think it's finished when, if it's something like this, my eye doesn't linger on one, one thing too much. It's very it's difficult to decide. Something about balance? Or yeah, when it's all balanced. Yeah, that's what I would say. When it's, if your eye doesn't linger on one part more than the other, if not like heavily swayed towards one part, like Michelle said, it's more balanced. Um, it feels right. There's yeah. Feeling that's the only thing. It sounds spacey, but it's what it feels right. But this like. And again, save your samples. If you go anywhere where there's passing out stuff, save that because it'll be fun. So is that from our conference? Yes, it is, all these things. These, are, not, these are at the dollar store.
make tracks like that. And again, don't be afraid to get messy with your fingers. Don't worry, we have smocks, guys. Yeah. And she's compositionally responding to show you things. So I, 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 I'm going to take a guess that she's not composing the way that she would compose. No. She's it's just trying to show you surfaces. If she was not doing that, she'd be composing a little bit differently. This is all a sampler platter. I always think paint. about that when I demo. It's like a sampler platter versus a finished composition. Mm -hmm. um, same thing with other household tools. Depending on how much paint you get on this, you can get some really cool marks with it. Um, sponges, be your best friend. You can cut them, make them in different shapes. Now, because I have, you want to keep more, you want to keep this, this, the uh, water that you use a lot cleaner because now it'll look like watercolor. However, sometimes you can keep it messy as long as that's not your mixing water or because you don't want a clean yellow or white. You want to have a, more of a mixing palette and then a add water palette, uh, a mixing bucket and add water bucket. But these can get really, really cool textures in here. Um, this thing, again, keep the samples you get. I have no idea what to do with this. <laughs> they are for printing. It's like a fish printing thing that is very popular in Japanese art. Um, I don't know how you can stamp because the flat side has just got this on it. But, again, experiment. See what you can do with it. Let me rub it around. Make some fun, weird looking things, but I don't know how effective these dots are, these little textural marks are. Um, what else can you use? Oh, tape. Tape is fun to use because um, when you put it on, it'll peel off easy, easier if it's on wet paper. If it's on, if you're using just straight masking tape, I recommend using artist tape. But if you're using something like this on dry paper, it's probably going to rip off the side. So what you want to do is just try to wear off the stick by putting it on fabric a little bit. So it's still sticky, but it won't rip off the paper. It's a little less sticky. If you add tape, this is probably because I'm going to put this on some the clean paper. Acts as a relief tool. So you paint over. This is a sponge brush. This is pretty fun too. And again, when you have fresh paint like this, you can go through that. But if it gets too dry or it's still soggy, you might rip the paper. So use this after experimenting. See, that was a little actually soggy paper doesn't work. It's very important to experiment. But tape can be a pretty good tool if you want to start off with maybe a white surface or start off with a colored surface, but let that dry and you can make letters or patterns or anything in it. Um, I think I've exhausted my use of tools that I have with me right now. Probably won't want to use these <laughs> with kids, but a small mallet. If you want to, they really like smashing this kind of stuff. That'll do. Did you want me to show anything else? Um, I was going to show some printmaking, um, but then. Oh, this too. If you oh. have thicker paint, you can use this to just apply in large quantities for them to start. Just palette knife. With it on there. Different types of paintbrushes. That's it. Thank you. If, if you were to frame a section of that, if you were to say, okay, um, find a spot that you might compose right now without, you know, not being able to adjust anymore, how, what would you choose and what area would you choose and why? What I choose, I... Here's another sheet of paper. Yeah, I can call this a sheet of cardboard. Oh, she's making a viewfinder. Yeah, I like a viewfinder. This is what you want to use as a viewfinder, but it's quick. choose right here. Maybe, yeah, maybe a little bigger than that, but probably right here because it has a good mix of thicker color, that really interesting gold line, some smaller bits of texture right here. Or 
I might like that because it's got the white and the thin, the um, sharper points of texture where that spray happened. A glob right there, this interesting line, some of the faded color, and a little bit of the gold. So it really depends on your personal interests. But oh, there we go. Interesting. <laughs> Um, thank you. <laughs>